We're going to be talking about Power Rangers the movie from March of 2017. And I actually like this movie a lot. It was better than what I expected it to be. It was directed by Dean Israelite. Israelite. Is Israelite? I have a feeling I'm going to mispronounce his name. He directed a movie called Magician in 2006. And interestingly enough, he directed another movie called Project Almanac in 2014. Produced by Michael Bay of the Transformers movies, which he directed. <laughs> which, if you guys have watched my other reviews or just other Glenn Plays videos or any other videos on my YouTube channel, you'll know that I fucking hate Michael Bay's movies. His Transformers movies are the worst kind of garbage you could ever watch. And this is the one spoiler I'm going to give in this video is that there there is a Transformers joke in the Power Rangers movie where Megazord steps on a yellow Camaro with black stripes on it and Jason the Red Ranger says, sorry Bumblebee, and throws the fucking Camaro off to the road somewhere. Alright, well the, there's a lot I want to talk about about Power Rangers the movie. But I'm going to try to do it in a way where it doesn't give out too many spoilers. I mean, there's going to be, like, some spoiler-ish stuff, but not enough to, like, ruin the movie experience for you. There's just certain things I really want to talk about and get out of the way. I honestly felt that this movie had a lot of inspiration and connections to the movie The Breakfast Club. People five to eight years younger than me aren't really going to remember that movie, but I do. Anyone that grew up in... The late 80s, early 90s are going to remember that movie as being a really great movie about teenagers and um, just people that are different but find similarities within themselves and come together as friends. And they applied it to the Power Rangers franchise and in this movie it, it worked great. There's something in this movie that we didn't get in the television show and that's a lot of character development. We didn't, in the television show... We really didn't get to see a whole lot of who, you know, Jason and Trini and Kimberly and Zack and Billy were. It was just all, like, thrown at us. And, like, the, you know, the first couple episodes of Power Rangers in America here, we, you know, we realize who the Power Rangers are and, you know, they're teenagers from Angel Grove and blah, 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 and Zordon gives them powers. And they're already, you know... They have their suits and they got the Zords and shit within the first, like, half hour of their origin story in the television show. And this movie, like, fleshes out all of our characters and pans it out a little bit more. And that's what I really love about this movie. It This takes Power Rangers and just modernizes it slightly. Not in a bad way, because modern Hollywood has a way of destroying movies. We get to see a little bit more of each one of these characters. They're, they're not just, you know, just characters that are thrown out there and get powers and everything. We get to see everything. There's a campfire scene where um, each character explains who they are and the problems they're dealing with. What makes them upset or why they do certain things or what irks them. The campfire scene in this movie actually cl very, very, very closely resembles the scene in The Breakfast Club where... The five kids are sitting around in the library talking about each other's problems and their parents and what really upsets them in life and just everything. And in that scene, I could really I could pinpoint each character the director was going for and who he kind of uh, kind of put put these characters into the Power Rangers characters. You know, you could tell who was the John Bender of the Power who was the, the nerdy jock of the Power Rangers, and who was the Molly Ringwald of the Power Rangers, who was the Ali Sheedy of the Power Rangers, who was the Anthony Michael Hall of the Power Rangers. It was just, it was all of that, I could really tell, but when I was thinking about that, I really didn't give a shit, because it, it was working really well, and I, it made me care about these characters, and that's what was really important. This movie and the the path the director chose for you know each character in the Power Rangers it worked because it made you care about these characters it made me give a shit there were scenes where it, it made me tear up about what each one of these guys was going through and that's what I really loved about this movie because 
the, in the original Power Rangers series, they all seemed like these preppy jock type characters. There wasn't really a solid character I really connected with or could really relate to, except for the only one I could really relate to is like Tommy, closest of all. And it's just because I, my favorite color was always green. Emerald is my birthstone. And I just, I, you know, I had long hair when I was younger. I thought Tommy was fucking awesome. A lot of people thought Jason David Frank's character, the Green Ranger, was fucking awesome. That's what I really love about this movie and how it was handled. Like, all these characters in this movie, sure, some of them were popular at one time, especially Jason the Red Ranger. They're going to show you in this movie that he was a popular high school athlete and he was kind of disgraced by the, his actions. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's kind of like a high school kind of football prank that kind of harkens back to like old high school pranks of like um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High made me think of, but just like stuff like that. But, but you know, he was kind of disgraced himself. These guys are all kind of outcasts. They're, you know, they all end up in detention together at the beginning of the movie. And that's what I really liked about this movie. I could connect with the characters more. And that's what's really important with any movies, that you can connect with the characters and really relate to them and really give a shit about them. All of the actors in these parts give really great performances. Doc A. Montgomery is Jason, the Red Ranger. He was really awesome, but there's one thing I want to talk about. There's one thing that... I don't know if the director was really going for this, but it's one thing that just played out in the back of my mind while I was watching this movie, and I just could not get it out of the back of my mind. And it, 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 it stayed with me throughout the rest of the film, ever since I saw him at the beginning of this movie. And the beginning of this movie starts with his character, Jason. Um, Doc Gray looks like Chris Pine. He acts like Chris Pine. He's very close to that acting style. Zordon tells him, you know, he's the leader of the Power Rangers. It's, you know, forced, not forced onto him, but just, you know, hinted at it. You know, you're, you're the Red Ranger. There's a reason why you found the Red Power Coin. And it, the performance he gives almost reminds me of the performance Chris Pine gave in the 2009 Star Trek and Star Trek in the Darkness, where it's like, he was the, you know, he was the rebel. He was constantly getting in the fucking trouble, and all of a sudden it's just like he was meant for this greater destiny. He was meant for something great, and you know, he says, "Fuck it, I'm gonna rise to this challenge. I'm gonna fucking lead the Power Rangers." And it, it it's almost like, you know, the Star Trek movies, the, the the modern Star Trek movies with Chris Pine. It mirrors that pretty fucking close. Naomi Scott is the Pink Ranger. I gotta say, she does a pretty damn good job as the new Kimberly. She's, you know, very cute. I think I think any teenager going into this movie now is, you know, they're gonna love her. Another character, according to every YouTube reviewer on the internet, R.J. Seiler, who played Billy the Blue Ranger. Everyone says he stole the show, he was fucking amazing, he was fucking funny. I'm gonna agree with him, he, he was great. He's yet another person I could relate to in this movie. Just being how nerdy he was and just getting... He's a character that got picked on a lot in the movie. Me being the nerd I was. I'm still a nerd nowadays, but I was a huge nerd back when I was a kid. And I always got bullied and picked on and beat up and shit when I was younger. And It's just another character I could yet relate to in this movie. And he did a very good job. Becky G is Trini. I thought she was good. She was like the Ali Sheedy of this movie from The Breakfast Club. Didn't say much. Totally just, you know, wanted to be isolated from the rest of the team for most of the movie. And then eventually she kind of came around and wanted to be with them. Ludi Lin is Zack. We get an Asian guy as the Black Ranger. But that's one thing I was going to comment on too, is that in the original Power Rangers, we had an Asian girl as the Yellow Ranger, a black guy as the Black Ranger. It felt like it was... Kind of racist in a way, but we didn't really say much about it. Our first uh, introduction to the, his character, I felt like he was kind of like this cliche, kind of excitement searching kind of guy, like thrill seeking type person. It's like, all right, you know, he's, him and Trina are going to be the ones that nobody gives a shit about. And, but until we get this campfire scene where we start to care about him, he's got his own backstory and. 
his backstory was the story that made me start tearing up in the movie. It was just really, really emotional. Okay, with all the character development I was talking about and just the story we get, therein lies the problem. Because if you have any like younger kids, they might not like this movie as much because we really don't get to see the Power Rangers in their suits or the Zords for most of the movie. And it's because this this pretty much is an origin story. We're going back to the beginning here. The director really wanted us to care about these characters and get involved in these characters. I'm going to compare this to Kong Skull Island because as much as I like Kong Skull Island, I really didn't give a shit about many of the main characters except for John C. Riley. In this movie, I really got involved in these characters. Bill Hader voiced Alpha 5 and honestly, like, I still watch the Power Rangers. I got seasons of it on DVD. But I, I stopped watching it after the Mighty Morphin series when it turned to like Power Rangers something else like Zeo or something. That's when I stopped giving a shit. And I always thought Alpha was kind of embarrassing. Like, whenever I... The Power Rangers 95 movie when I took... You know, my dad took me to see that and it's just... Uh, Alpha 5 was so fucking annoying and embarrassing. Not to... Well, not to say that the rest of the 95 Power Rangers movie was embarrassing to watch with my family, but... The, the, <laughs> Alpha 5 was always an annoying fucking character. That ay 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 and all that bullshit. And I loved Alpha 5 in this movie. Bill Hader does a great job of voicing him. His design was really cool. He kicked ass. He helped the Power Rangers train. He was fucking great. Brian Cranston in that big pin needle thing that every other YouTuber has commented on that looks like that square thing you'd like put your hand against with all those like pins in it and stuff and it would like reflect your leg. Like, you, you know, your hand, or you can put your face in it. I don't know what those things are called. No no YouTuber knows what they're fucking called. But you know what I'm talking about. You all had one when you were a kid. I did too. But Brian Cranston and Zordon kind of looks like that, like the nail thing. And In, in my opinion, it works. There's there's a few scenes in which Brian Cranston, I, don't, I thought kinda, it kind of gave a weak performance as Zordon, but it's like throughout most of it, he gave a pretty convincing you know, performances Zordon. Zordon's not the all-powerful mentor that the Power Rangers always had. He had his own vulnerabilities, based off of past experiences. I'm not gonna dis I'm not gonna spoil it and give away everything about it. But there was a lot about that that I really loved too. Every character in this movie had, you know, their strengths and their vulnerabilities. Even Zordon. Rita Repulsa. I gotta talk about her. Elizabeth Banks gives the. I think she gives the best performance she could in this part. And there's a lot of other YouTubers that are saying, well, you know, she she did okay, but she tried going back to that campy, goofy kind of style. I, I don't know. I thought she could have been a little bit more serious. But in all honesty, I thought it worked in this part. There were scenes where she was downright scary. There was like a, a few jump scares that even my son jumped at. He's like, well, I didn't... You know, I didn't know this was going to be in this movie. But I thought Elizabeth Banks does a good job. Krispy Kreme's Donuts also plays a part in this. Um, Here's the thing. Other YouTubers are bitching and complaining about how there's so much uh, product placement in this movie. You know, with Krispy Kreme's. <sighs> okay, there's there's one major scene, really, where Krispy Kreme's plays a part in it. I'm not going to spoil it, but it's 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 a major scene, Okay. There's a few, there's a few cheap moments with their donuts or whatever. But every YouTuber I've watched that have given has given a review of this movie has bitched and complained that all oh, Krispy Kremes, you know, they're fucking everywhere in this movie. I can count on one hand where they were in the fucking movie. That's part of the problem I have with Michael Bay's movies. There's so many fucking product placements that are so in your fucking face that it just it takes you out of the movie. It takes you out of the story and just you know, distracts you from everything else that's going on. It wasn't like that in Power Rangers. There wasn't, like, Krispy Kreme advertisements all over the fucking place. It was just, like, a few minor scenes. It's not like fucking Transformers where you get a fucking Mountain Dew machine that turns into a Decepticon shooting fucking sodas at everyone and shit, you know? Well, the CG was on par. It was okay for a modern movie. I'd say a quarter of the CG wasn't that great. Acceptable. I'll... I'll I'll say that, acceptable. They played the Power Ranger theme song. Me and like one other YouTuber have really described how we're kind of disappointed that there's not theme songs in movies anymore. 
Like, if you look at Batman Begins, it had that, you know, Hans Zimmer type score. It was, like, really dramatic. But it, it wasn't as good as, like, the Danny Elfman theme from the 89 Batman. Like, da 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 One of the things I thought about in my head going in this movie, it was like, am I going to get to hear, you know, Go Go Power Rangers? Or are they just going to abandon that for all these fucking modern, crappy, you know, musical scores you got going on? You know, like Lady Gaga or any of these fucking other shitty... Shitty songs that are in popular culture nowadays, but no, we did get to hear the Power Rangers theme song, and it was in a very fitting part of the movie, but I wish there would have been more of it. There wasn't enough of it for me, because it's a Power Rangers movie, and that theme song really fucking gets you going, whether it's just watching the show or playing one of the fucking video games. But I have to give them props, in a day and age where we kind of abandon theme songs in movies... And they actually included a theme song in this fucking movie. I actually was pretty satisfied with the movie for the most part. I didn't... I don't know, there's a lot of YouTubers saying that, you know, like... They don't know who the target audience was for. And it was just... Kind of, you know, a little bit convoluted or disjointed. And there, like, there was a little bit too much campiness in it. Or there wasn't enough seriousness in it. I'm just gonna say this. Look at the source material! It's a fucking movie based on Power Rangers! You're really gonna sit there and nitpick that? Watch one episode of Power Rangers and tell me that this movie isn't leaps and bounds better than that. I don't get the bitching. It was a great movie. I cared about these characters. I loved them. I thought the end battle was great. The action was fucking great. My son loved it. You know what I mean? It was a great movie. I don't care what anyone says. I'm gonna give Power Rangers a B plus. And the reason I'm saying that is because even though I I enjoyed this movie better than Kong Island and I gave Kong Island a B plus, but where one fails at something, it picks up somewhere else. And what I what I mean by that is Kong Skull, Skull Island had a lot of great action parts, a lot of great you know cinematography, it's a lot of great everything. Except for the characters. In Kong Skull Island, Skull Island, I didn't care about the characters that much. I couldn't really find a character that I really gave a shit about. You know, it was one of those movies. But everything else was fucking awesome. And, you know, the Power Rangers movie, the action was great, but I, I gave a shit about all these characters. There wasn't as much action in it. We didn't get to see a whole lot. But there was so much great character development. It was a rich story. It kind of evens out in the end, so B+. Plus. But anyway, if you like what you saw, go check out some of my other videos on my channel. Subscribe if you want to to see more Glenn's movie reviews because I got more coming up. Go watch some of my Glenn Plays videos. I got some Power Rangers video games I played pretty recently. So, uh, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>